my, my next question is for Professor Dr. Habiba here. Yeah? And during his campaign, uh, Mr. Trump mentioned that Muslims will be banned from entering the United States and suggested that his administration will compile a registry of Muslims in the U.S. Now, how do you see this affecting students, Muslim, and also uh, uh, people visiting the United States? Uh, uh, the Muslim population is a big portion of uh, the world population. So how do you see this? Uh, and, and can he actually do things that he wanted to do because surely in America, yes, the president might want to do this, but there's Congress, there are lots of things that, that, that you need to uh, discuss with, with, with the people in your own administration. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Suhaimi. Uh, just like Professor Parfit, I would like to uh, preface my statement by saying thank you to UKM and thank you to Prof Imran for inviting me to be at the uh, Bichara Prasada. And it is such an honor for me and also for my university. But I also have to, pre uh, also have to uh, preface that with, by saying that whatever views I say here is not the views of UITM. Again, I would like to qualify my next few remarks by this statement, which is uh, that I don't know of anyone in this room who knows Trump personally. May may maybe there are. I'm not sure. I haven't done. But... I don't know Trump, Mr. Trump, personally. What I know from him is from the media, okay? And I think most of us learn about Trump from the media, from YouTube, from the internet, and we have, we've, we've seen both sides, which is, you know, the media that supports him will support his policies, and the media that doesn't support him will not support his policies. So you can see Fox versus, uh, you know, CNN or whatever. So um, that's how I would like to uh, begin my statement. But I have been a student in the US. I'm a Muslim. My daughter is there. Our daughter is there. My husband is there in the audience. And uh, if I were a student there, a Muslim student, I would be very, very afraid. Because this is a powerful man. This is the most powerful man in the world. I mean, or so he claims to be. Okay, like you say, the Senate, the Congress will have yeah, yeah. powers as well. So I would be very, very uh, afraid about what he might do and what he can do to, do, uh, you know, to uh, initiate the Muslim registry, to talk about uh, deportation of Muslims, to ban Muslim immigrants from coming or tourists. He even said that. And uh, I would be very afraid to even maybe uh, go home for summer for fear that I might not be, um, you know, uh, admitted back into the country to continue my studies if I were a student. Or I would say I will not go back for the summer because, you know, I would af I'm, I'm afraid. So I would stay in the U.S. But again, whether you are outside the U.S. or inside the U.S., the threat is there. And, and it would be uh, a natural human being's reaction to be afraid. This is a powerful man talking. And so um, it would be natural for a person to be afraid. And I would advise students, if I were there, to be careful in terms of what you say, what you do, yeah, uh, so that you are not misconstrued. But again, like many of us, we are unclear about where Trump will go in 24 hours from now. So although he may be deemed the most powerful man on earth, he has restrictions as well. Congress, the Senate, and the ACLU. You know, the ACLU has been saying, the American Civil Liber uh, Liberties Union has been saying that he cannot uh, impose a ban on uh, Muslims or, uh, or based on religion or anything. And, and if you look at the history of uh, the US, it's a land of the immigrants anyway. It is, uh, you know, it, it, it is, uh, the, the Constitution is based on the freedom of speech, freedom, uh, equal rights, etc. So, um, while on the one hand I would be afraid, on the other hand I would have faith in the American system to, to sort of, um, I won't say block, but to maybe steer him in another direction. But then again, I'm still afraid because uh, the Republicans, you know, he's a Republican. Senate is controlled by Repu Republican, also the um, House of Representatives. So, you know, it's a, it's a powerful, powerful kind of uh, 
white, male, and very, very rich group of people. So that's my take on it for now. But, but don't you think that is also a contradiction coming from a businessman? Uh, uh, his statement should Absolutely. be business friendly, or was he basically uh, um, re responding to, I wouldn't say like the gallery, because he needed votes at that particular time during the campaign. Yeah. So his statement was basically, please vote for me because I stand for this. But as a businessman, he would have, uh, he, he would come up with statements that would be business friendly. And that kind of statement is not a business friendly statement. So let, let's try to understand the contradiction here. Was it just for the votes? Uh, and later on, Congress will advise him, hey, hey this is not a good thing yeah. to do. Yeah. Apparently, he has softened his stance a bit yeah. uh, in, in recent times. Yeah. But if you want to talk about him as a businessman, a billionaire yeah. businessman, then uh, he would be um, not very intelligent to exclude a, a substantial number of uh, people from the country. You see, the education industry in the U.S. is a $30 billion uh, industry. And if he's, a, if he's a businessman, and if he says he wants to divest himself of his business, but then he has children, okay, who will continue with his businesses, it would not be uh, a good move for him to exclude a major portion of the, of the money that's coming into the country. Yeah, it's, in 2016, it's 30 billion yes. industry. Yeah. Yes. Professor Parfit, you wanted to add something to that? Um, just a, a, a gloss to, I think, the very uh, well-observed comments that you made there. But I think one way in perhaps we could, one way in which some people um, uh, sort of um, reconcile this contradiction about him being a businessman and making yeah. such strange comments, it would be to see that actually these are the kinds of comments of a businessman who says what he needs to say to get the deal done and then when the signatures are on paper, then you start the serious negotiations. Uh -huh. okay. that's, that's one approach I've okay. yes, yes. heard suggested. 